Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 5b of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 130 and the question is 7. It reads, the diagram shows a horizontal table on which a 2 kilo mass is placed. A 4 kilo mass and a 1 kilo mass hang freely over the sides. The coefficient of friction at the table is 1 half. Find the common acceleration of the three masses and the tension in each string. So, I would suggest again that you watch my uh, my video on the massless rope watch my video on Newton's third law and also watch my video I've entitled something along the lines of intro to um, pulley and rope systems if you watch the three of those you'll understand all the tension forces that are going on here or the tension forces and you basically will have a good understanding of it and you, you won't, it's not just a case of doing something and that's always a lot easier so what I'm going to do is take it that you've read those, or excuse me, watched those videos, and I'm going to plow straight into it. So the tensional force we have here, I'm going to call this one T2, and this one T2, this one T1, and this one T1. Remember, these forces, while they're equal, they're not Newton's third law action-reaction pairs, and the only reason they're equal is because the, the rope is massless and inextensible. Alright, the next thing we need to do is put in the weight vectors. So this one is just going to be negative 4g j hat. Sorry, this is j hat as well. This is i hat. This is negative i hat. And this is positive j hat. All right. So this is negative uh, negative g j hat. This is negative 2g j hat. Now, because this 2 kilo mass is on a table, there is a Newton's third law action-reaction pair here. So we have the action of the block on the table, now we need the action of the table on the block. We call that the normal force, and the normal force is equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So it's equal to 2g j hat, like so. And the only thing we haven't put in thus far is the, the frictional force. Now the frictional force is on the table, so we need to decide which direction we think the system is going to move. Now it doesn't matter which it is, but I'm just going to say the system is going to move down this way, uh, across this way and down, oh, excuse me, up this way. So this is going to be negative a j hat, this is going to be positive a j hat, and this is going to be positive a i hat. Now I know our diagram is starting to get a bit cluttered, but all your diagrams with these, uh, with these, these questions are going to be quite cluttered. The last thing we need to do is add in our tensional force, or excuse me, our frictional force, which is going to go in this direction here. All right, so. Yeah, I hope that's not you know not not too confusing. I know it is quite cluttered and it's quite busy, but it shouldn't be too confusing. All right. If you want, you could very easily put this one here, this one here, and this one here, and do all the forces separately on each one. All right. So the next thing we need to do is apply Newton's second law. Newton said that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. So what I'm going to do is start off with the one kilo mass. I'm going to go the sum of the forces on the 1 kilo mass is equal to its mass times acceleration. So the sum of the forces is equal to T1 j hat minus g j hat. That's equal to its mass, which is 1, times its acceleration, which is positive a j hat. So what we're going to get is T1 minus g in the j hat unit vector direction is equal to a times j hat. And I'm going to note this, I'm going to call it equation 1. So T1 minus G in the J hat unit vector direction is equal to A times the J hat unit vector direction. Alright, that's pretty straightforward. Now the next thing we need to do is the second, or the 4 kilo mass. So the 4 kilo mass is here. This is going to be very similar. So we're going to have it moving in this direction. So it's going to be um, positive T2 J hat negative 4g j hat is equal to negative a times negative 4a excuse me j hat all right that's going to be equation 2 so we're going to have t2 minus 4g in the j hat direction is equal to negative 4a in the j hat direction and the last thing we need to do is the 2 kilo mass now this time we also have a frictional force and you'll remember that the frictional force is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. 
So in this case we're going to have the normal force of 2g times the coefficient of friction which we're given as a half and you're going to get the frictional force is equal to g negative g i hat negative g i hat all right so let's just apply that once again the sum of the forces uh, is equal to um, the mass times the acceleration all right so i'm just going to draw it here because this might be slightly larger so this is the two kilo kilogram mass so the sum of the forces is equal to negative t1 i hat negative g j hat or g i hat excuse me that's the frictional force positive t2 i hat positive 2g j hat, negative 2g j hat. That's equal to 2 kilograms times the acceleration, which was a i hat. All right, so we can see straight away, of course, that these, the j hat directions, just cancel out. And what we're left with over on the left-hand side, or the i hat directions, is that we have t2 minus t1 minus g in the i hat direction is equal to 2a in the i hat direction. All right, so just let me write this in here and I'll clean, clean up the clutter. All right, I'm just going to clean up the clutter now. Now, the question is this, do we need the diagram anymore? Is that going to clutter up what we're doing? And I'm going to suggest that it is. We don't really need the diagram anymore. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of all these things here. I know, of course, if you have a copy book in front of you, then you don't need to be rubbing out things like this, but I don't have that luxury. And finally, we have... T2 minus T1 minus G, J hat direction is equal to 2A I hat. Sorry, that's I hat. Alright, so obviously you could have skipped ahead of that if I'm, I'm assuming you did that. Alright, so now we have three equations. We have equation 1 here, equation 2, and equation 3. And we need to solve these. So we need to solve them simultaneously, or in, in other ways if you want to do that. Now, we're asked to find the common acceleration of the three. So what we're going to try and do is get the acceleration in terms of something else. Or perhaps it's easier to get the, the tensional force first and then the acceleration. It doesn't really matter, I suppose, really. All right? So if we look, if you look at this, this one here, we've, I know gravity is a number, so we have a scalar, we'll say. So we have tension, T1, and acceleration. Here we have T2 and acceleration. So because we have acceleration in both, we can get the T1 in terms of T2. And down here we have both of those, so we're able to get T1 and T2 in terms of the acceleration. So I'll try and do that. So we know from equation 1 that uh, we know that T1 is equal to A plus G. Now look at the directions. It, there is no, we'll say, mixing of I hats and J hats. So what we can say that these are all numbers because they're in the same direction. So are these and so are these. So I'm able to make out this equation here. I'm going to call this equation 4. All right? So I'm going to put equation 4 into equation into equation 2. So 4 into 2. So we're going to get T2. Or, um, oh, what am I after doing that? The other way around, sorry. I need to do this. I need to go that A is equal to T1 minus G. That's what we needed to do, excuse me. A is equal to T1 minus G. That's equation 1. So I need to put equation 1 into equation 2. So we get T2 minus 4G is equal to negative 4 times T1 minus G. Alright, so we're going to get T2 minus 4G minus is equal to minus 4 T1 uh, plus 4G. So therefore T2 is equal to uh, 8G minus 4 T1. And I'm going to call that equation number 5. So we're doing well now. We're doing well. The next thing I'm going to do is plug this value into number 3. Because that will get us the acceleration in terms of one of the tensional forces. So we'll get... Uh, we'll get... We're going to put number 5 into 3. So we're going to get 8G minus 41 
minus T1 minus G is equal to 2A. So there we're going to get minus 5T1 plus 7G is equal to 2A. And we're going to get that, uh, we're going to get that 7G minus 2A over 5 is equal to T1. Now this seems, this may seem a bit, we're going all over the shop here, but what I'm trying to do is eliminate one of the tensional forces, then eliminate the second tensional force. By now we have T1 and as a result T2 in terms of A. So we can plug one of these into any of our remaining uh, equations and we're getting everything in terms of A and G. So I'm going to call this equation here number 6. So I'll plug it into any one of these. The easiest one probably is, is equation 1 because we're dealing with T1. So we're going to go 6 into 1. So we're going to have 7G minus 2A over 5 minus G is equal to A. So 7G minus 2A minus 5G is equal to 5A. So this is going to become, excuse me, this is going to become 7A is equal to 2G. Therefore A is equal to 2G over 7. And 2G over 7 is equal to 2 times 9.81 divided by 7. 2.8. That is correct. Alright, so we get the acceleration of 2.8. And you might be saying to yourself, holy Holy God, that's a, that's crazy stuff we're doing there. How am I supposed to be able to do that? It's just manipulation. It's what I did was actually quite structured. We have three variables: t1, a, and t2. And I wanted to get everything in terms of a. So initially, I got t1 in terms of a. Then I got t2 in terms of a. Then I got this whole equation, which is t1 and t2 in terms of a. And then I finally plugged them back in up here to get everything in terms of a and get a value for a. All right, so that was, that was actually reasonably quick and reasonably straightforward. So the next thing we're asked to do is find the tension in each string. For all, yeah, find, we found the acceleration, now we're asked to find the tension in each string. So we're asked to find T1 and T2. Now look at equation 6. It's got T1 in terms of A. So we can go straight for equation 6. So equation 6 says that it's 7G minus 2 times 2.8 over 5 is equal to T1 is equal to... Right, so 7 multiplied by 9.81, uh, we need to take away from that 2 times our acceleration, and divide that by 5, and we get an answer of 12.61, which is correct. That's equal to T1. Alright, that's correct. So T1 is equal to 12.6. A is equal to 2.8. Of course, the tensional, for the tensional unit is newtons, and the acceleration unit is meters per second squared. Finally, we're going to get T2. So T2 is up here. All right. So yeah, we could use that. We could use question or equation five or equation two. I'm actually going to use equation five. So we're going to get that T2 is equal to eight times 9.81 minus four times 12.6. So it's 8 multiplied by 9.81, and you take away from that 4 times 12.6. That gives an answer of 28 newtons, which is also correct. All right, so that was actually reasonably straightforward. I know it might look a bit confusing, but once you get, once you get in the right frame of mind, that's actually quite straightforward. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.